Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'm very excited to tell you why I've switched after 20 years using laptops to a mini PC. You heard me right. I am switching fully mini PC after 20 years of using probably every bit of laptop in the market to a mini PC. You know why? And let me just tell you why. After a long time of use, every possible major brand from MSI, Asus, Lenovo, Dell, Alienware, whatever you want to call in your mind, I am so pissed about laptops and I am switching to mini PCs. Here's my reasons. This video won't be short, but won't be too long. So you can get yourself a cup of coffee or a tea too. Just friendly conversation between you and I. And I want you to write down what laptops that you purchased over the time and what problems that you live through those laptops, because that will help everybody. Let me just tell you examples. I, early in the days, I've used uh, some of the Lenovo models just because of the uh, IBM and Lenovo transitions. And I'm talking about 10 or 13, 15 years ago. So in, in those times, uh, the Lenovo build quality was quite good. And also I've used IBM models early, ThinkPad models. They were like rock solid. But after that, like physical qualities of the laptops were going quite a bit of down. And the lately no upgradability is one of the main issues. And everybody knows that, so I don't want to repeat everything again in this video. But early in my use scenarios, I can gather the information about like pinpointing stuff. If you buy a mid-level or low-level laptop, the hinge system is ruined, okay? Like this is the most important part that you move your laptop. The hinge systems are way cheaper if you go mid-level and below. So you can take your laptop to a probably crap yard if you bought an entry-level or mid-level of laptop series. And then the keyboard quality. If you go again mid-level and low-level, the keyboard is ruined. Touchpad quality goes way and way below average. And then if you buy a sort of like a mid-ground, the TN panels, maybe some VA panels are pretty cheap and bad looking. And outside brightness is not enough, most of them. So if you go upper mid-level, then you got a little bit of hardware like an additional GPU built in and better cooling like dual fans and dual, uh, you know, heat pipes and stuff. But what happens, your plastic quality is still top, not top notch. So you got issues of physical capabilities and the firmware updates of the laptops are not good, especially with my early days of use of Asus with any models from TUF to Zephyrus from VivoBook to whatever you want to call it from ASUS, they, um, you know, throw the products out as fast as they, uh, they can, and then they don't have any firmware update, then what do you have to live with? So you got to live with blue screens of that, and you got to like keep crashing your system, reinstalling and rebooting your windows. That's kind of like a potential nightmare. I'm not talking about ASUS just. I've experienced similar stuff with the Dell XPS series or also with the MSI series. Like majority of the laptops, like even including the Lenovo, I had it all and I am here, okay? It's just, just there is a term in our uh, language Turkish, bıçak kemiye dayandı, which means knife is on the bone. There is no space to go for the knife to cut your throat. So technically it goes to that stage. And lately, the thinner the laptops get, okay, this is a good laptop, by the way, this is one of my favorites, and uh, this is not a sponsored video, by the way, this is Huawei D16. It's the closest stuff that you probably can get, fully metal, perfect, near perfect build quality, just like Mac Mini, or, uh, sorry, not the Mac Mini, but um, MacBook. So it feels like a solid MacBook and it runs like a solid MacBook, but it's not a MacBook, it's running Windows. So why do I change it? It doesn't have a GPU inside and it doesn't have the connections I need. Look at this, it's a lightweight and thin device and it doesn't have an Ethernet port from each side. 
But with the mini PCs, I got lots of ports. I will tell you all about it. So what is the advantage of the mini PCs against the laptops? First of all, this laptop is one of the good ones and it's a ultra book style tin laptop. This is a 16 inch laptop with a good screen. That's why I bought it. It has Intel 13900H CPU, which is a quite good one. And I was using it with a dedicated eGPU that I connected through Thunderbolt 3 and 4 port, Thunderbolt 4, I remember correctly. And I made a dedicated guide video about this until now, because it has a fixed memory of 16 gigabytes. It's not fun. If you're a designer and video editor like me over 15 to 20 years, you are pissed off with a 16 gigabytes of RAM because hardware needs, you know, some potential to improve. Right now, this Minis Forum X1 Pro is 32 gigabytes, far more than enough for me, but it has also ability to upgrade however the hell I want. So I can upgrade the memory with DDR5s and I can boost it up. I can add an eGPU through the Oculink port at the back a lot faster than the Thunderbolt. And uh, other than that, I got four display ports. One display port that you see, HDMI port, and also USB 4 port is supporting uh, monitor output. And on the front, I got another USB 4, so it gives another uh, monitor output. So I got four monitor outputs. If you're a pro, multiple jobs done, that is a must. But with this, I got only two display ports, one Type-C, one HDMI, limited, again. And with this, no Ethernet port. With this, I got two gigabit of Ethernet port. So you can watch my full review about the Minis Forum X1 Pro if you wonder. That's why when you watch that video, you'll understand why I switched from laptop to a mini PC. The weight of this device is 2.5 kilos, including the power adapter itself, because I have to carry a power adapter. Although I can charge it from type C, the only type C chargers that I can use are expensive gun chargers, like 120 watts, if you want a short uh, recharge time. So this device is 1.4 kilo and some plus. So this is a 2.6, nearly two times the weight. And take a look at the size of this. So as you can see, I can carry it in my bag wherever I go and the Minis Forum X1 Pro or any piece, mini PC for that matter just makes a lot of sense compared to the laptops. You might say in this moment, hey, stop man, this one has a built-in screen, battery, portability, keyboard, wherever you go, you can hop it out, you know, take it out and open it up and write down. Okay, I get it. I'm not telling this is like a laptop. But if you're a pro like me, if you're working inside of an office or a studio and then go to your home to continue your work, you don't need a laptop. You can do it with the mini PC. You, you can just hook this up to your TV projector like I do and then use your keyboard and mouse to remotely and then you're done. You don't need even a monitor. But although I have multiple portable monitors, you know by now, and I have also TVs and projectors. So I use these things anywhere I go. You can go to a hotel room and connect it to a TV for God's sake. So technically you can do many things that you probably never thought you could do it. And this X1 Pro from Minis uh, Forum has also support at this USB 4 port power delivery. I've tried it, it works with my laptop's power adapter, so you can use it. But it also has, as you can see, let me just show it here, a tape style power input, eight style power input here. So you don't need a power brick to carry. It has its own power supply built inside. That's what I like about it. So I don't need to carry anything. I just plug into the wall and that's it. I, uh, I have two spare cables, one for the home, one for the office, and also one for the studios that I use this mini PC right beside the TV. So I don't need a power brick to carry around. This is as small as it gets. So I am not telling this is going to be a laptop, you know, just replacing your laptop. But for me, it beats the crap out of any laptop when it comes down to upgradability. This device has three m.2 ports and many of the mini pcs at least have two m.2 ports so you can upgrade your internal ssd but with these you can only have one port for example this device has a one m.2 port 
But Mac Mini, no port. MacBook, no port. And do they have additional memory upgrade? No. So you're, yeah, beeped up. So they are trying to sell you much more expensive memory, much more expensive storage to, you know, upgrade for the first place that you purchased the item. So you are ending up to purchasing the highest spec device and paying a lot of money in advance. But normally you can go gradually with a mini PC. I can buy with a one SSD inside and two spare ports for me to upgrade later on. And I can share those three M.2s from two 2.5 gigabit ethernet port as a server. I can turn this mini PC into a server, for God's sake. So technically, you can't beat the mini PC with a laptop. Although I agree, laptops have batteries, so touchpads, touch screens some of the time. So it's not, you know, apple to oranges. I'm not comparing one to another and just take a mini PC and forget about the laptop. But for me, laptop is done because of my workflow. I am sharing my workflow with you. If you are a pro, okay, working with video editing, photo editing, and if you want gaming capabilities, you gotta use Windows. You can't go Mac because Mac still doesn't really support gaming. And the second thing that, uh, worst thing about the Macs, and I am a Mac hater, by the way, if you haven't noticed. So if you buy a Mac, they are running on ARMS. And they are running on ARMS, they, they can only install Windows if you have Windows software to run or Windows games to run. You gotta rely on emulation of Windows. It's not like the old times where you have Intel-based apples and you can install Windows by additional installment and you can really properly install Windows and use no more. So for a long time from an M1 standpoint to M2 and 3 and now M4 we are talking about, Mac is not giving you the option of gameplay, good amount of gameplay. I know some people will tell me there is a chance to gameplay but not as the PC itself. Let's just admit that. And the second thing is Upgradability is awful. You gotta pay in advance quite a bit of money, but with these you can upgrade. And this device has card reader on the side. Many of the mini PCs have card readers. This device has fingerprint, so I can open it up without pushing my pin and stuff. This is far more than enough. And a couple of SSDs will give me the ability to real time back up my data, just clone every day. My workflow is important. And also I can use additional drive to use for video files. Or if you're running too much of an, uh, you know, local AI, you can use one SSD for building databases and stuff because you're writing and d deleting files, you're eating the life of your SSD drive. And if the SSD drive life cycle is done, your PC will suddenly crash. But with this setup, you have additional uh, SSD ports. So technically, if you have a failure on the MacBook or Mac mini or any Ultrabook with an embedded SSD or a memory, you're doomed for failure. And there's no turning back from that failure. But with mini PC, let's go back to the normal sound. With the mini PC, you can do many things without any problem. So with the jokes aside, this was my journey and I've had enough with the laptops. I'm not saying laptops, laptops are bad, but over the time I couldn't get my hands on one single laptop that didn't cause me a lot of headaches. And along the journey I lost a lot of hair. That's one of the things. You pull out your hair because if you're seeing blue screen, you have a firmware problem, you have a stability problem, you have a heat problem with many of the laptops, but with mini PCs, especially high-end like this X1, and I wish to have someday maybe a HX 395, which is far faster than this, but upgradability was my first standpoint for this device. Lots of connections, and if I do need an additional eGPU, I will create a guide about this topic too. Just hit the like, ask your questions. But in the end of the video, I want you to again write down what sort of laptops that you purchased over time, what kind of problem happened to you. Because with my Asus Zephyrus, this keyboard area, okay, I'm going to repeat that because I shot that video. 
This area was a carbon fiber and it was like peeling off after a couple of months. And I am quite a clean guy and I don't sweat with my hands. So some people have like acid, maybe sweats and they sweat a lot, but I don't. I clean my laptop properly. I am a tech guy over 20 years and Asus have failed many people. Many people commented under that short video. You can go back and check in the channel. I'll try to take the links in the description and also around. You can check that, that thing. Asus Zephyrus is a high-end laptop and it fails on the build quality. Cheaper models have worst case scenario for hinges. When you move, you crack down the entire body like my Asus VivoBook. Le uh, and the Asus VivoBook, if I remember correctly, two or three years old, just a new one. So if you wanna buy something like this, buy something like this Huawei D16 or something proper aluminum, get close to strong and solid as to Mac. Yeah, as a Mac hater, it's difficult to admit, but get something solid built as a MacBook, but not a MacBook because it will get your money, lots more money than you should have spent for SSD, uh, for a memory, and in the long run, no upgradability. And if you fail, you're failed to doom unrepairable uh, processes. So I hope you learn thing or two in this video. This is not uh, just throw your laptop to a garbage, but I am going to get rid of this from this laptop and I'm going to continue with using mini PCs. Who knows if I find anything maybe interesting, I will get back to the laptops. But until now, from Dell XPS to Alienware to many Asus models, I am done with the laptops connection, upgradability, and everything that I've told you over so far. I don't want to repeat everything. Couple of stuff that I suggest. Get yourself a UPS again, because your professional Merc might need a power outage problem, salvation, solvability, because you need to solve the power problem. In case of an electric cutout, you could lose your entire workflow. And for that, you got to use an UPS. If you can buy a high-end uh, power brick, like an additional power bank, uh, but a big one, powerful one, you can run many mini PCs and you don't have to go this expensive, this big. There are tiny models out there and I showed it in the uh, videos. You can put them inside of your pocket. So you can literally go to a mini PC, a lot more logical than the laptops themselves. You can always buy a decent Android tablet or maybe Huawei tablet, who knows, with a different operation system on your mobile workflow. If you're going to, you know, go to a cafe for an eight hour, you can write down your comments, you can take notes, you can do all these things with your phone Any from last couple of years and we got voiceovers, voice to text and everything and assists and everything. I don't think that Mobility and opening up a laptop outside of a cafe is just um, old style for me. I, I'm trying to follow the tech as close as I can. This was my story. After 20 years, why I've switched from a laptop to a mini PC. And this was my journey. Bye guys. Until the next video. Hoşçakalın from Istanbul, Turkey.